We have a wonderful and unique role in this time of the Christian faith. And that is inviting the inbreaking kingdom of God onto the earth is actually our job. It's not even that heaven is wanting to do a whole bunch of stuff and we just sort of let it happen. No, the invitation of such is up to us. There's a lessons from the Lord's Prayer that we probably haven't meditated on nearly as much as we need. Uh, the first lesson of how the Lord's Prayer begins is um, our Father uh, who art in heaven. I think we need to pause for a moment that it doesn't say my Father who art in heaven. <laughs> it's our Father who art in heaven. You see, the Lord assumed a corporate environment. We live in such a individualistic part of the world that we assume that the Bible is always speaking to me and Jesus is always speaking to me and my church had better speak to me. <laughs> but that's not the assumption that um, the Gospels were written in, not the assumption at all, in fact, uh, of the entire scriptures. Very Hebraic in nature, which is very corporate in nature. So our Father, you know our most powerful prayers are when we do them together rather than me praying prayers myself. And we need to break out of that this is all about me thing when it comes to prayer and learn to enter into all of us calling to our Father together for our lives, our families, our church, our mission, uh, our city. Those Our Father prayers um, are a very important thing for us to grasp right out of the gate when it comes to prayer. Uh, secondly, uh, the lesson from prayer that's important for us to grasp is that downloading the kingdom is up to us. It's up to us. The kingdom's uh, work, uh, it's up to us to actually get it started, believe it or not. Um, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, your kingdom come. Jesus told us to pray that. All right, it's in your hands. You pray, you invite the kingdom down. It's, it's, uh, this is how I want you to pray because we're waiting for you. You're quarterback in the situation and the plays that you call in prayer, we will then respond. Boy, that is radically different than how many people think. Uh, what is going to be is going to be what God is going to do. God is God. God will move, you know, and uh, truth be told, uh, God is actually waiting for us to download the kingdom and usher in uh, the greatest plans that the Lord has. Thy kingdom come. We want your kingdom to get down here. The way that you're running stuff up there, awesome. We want that happening right down here. Downloading the kingdom is up to us. And then thirdly, a point that comes out of this is our provisions and self-care are actually all wrapped up and included and subsumed in this calling. As we engage in the uh, kingdom download lifestyle, and I dare say that that's a little different than a lot of American Christians' identity of Christianity, but if we actually engage in the kingdom download lifestyle, then our life is taken care of in the midst of the flow. This is why in Matthew 6, 33, seek first the kingdom of God, and then all these other things will be taken care of. They will be added to us naturally. Um, and so our provisions and our life and the issues of what our life needs are naturally included in what we are standing in the gap to download from heaven onto earth, onto our spot of the earth that we are responsible to affect. A fourth thing that comes out of the Lord's Prayer that I think, quite frankly, we don't uh, meditate on very much is that confronting evil is assumed. <laughs> it's assumed. You're going to be in this whole process. You're going to be dealing with evil. Um, you know, uh, give us this day our daily bread is the provision part. And lead us not into temptation, but give us victory, deliver us out of. And so there is this sense that 
There is going to be evil. There's going to be the work of evil. At times, it's going to be very alluring and very tempting, but cause us to arise and be strong in the face of it. But it's assumed that we are going to be dealing with evil in this life. I dare say a majority of Christians in our nation, uh, they think it's kind of weird if for some reason they have to go eyeball to eyeball with evil. Um, and yet the Lord in the prayer that he gave us assumed that we were going to be doing this. Now I know that if we never engage in reaching the lost and we never engage in effective evangelism, it creates difficulty in bringing us more to where uh, evil is abounding because we're not out on the front lines. However, this life, it is assumed we are going to be on the front lines by our Lord and we are going to be downloading heaven by our Lord and that is going to bring us eyeball to eyeball with evil and when that happens, we stand up strong in the power of the Lord and we win. We roar with an honest roar. Uh, the enemy has to roar with a fake one and has to back off. Um, and then a third, uh, a fifth thing that I uh, see that comes out of, uh, out of this whole Lord's Prayer is that three verses are actually spent on the text of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, all the way through the text. And then another nine verses are spent on the bold, tenacious, expectant attitude that needs to circumference uh, that prayer. I think it's possible for people to pray the Lord's Prayer in a couple of different ways. Some people pray the Lord's Prayer rather passively or rather obediently, some rather liturgically, routinely, um, and without the certain power. And then there are others that have learned to recognize the tenaciousness of the Lord's Prayer. You see, if Jesus had written this prayer for people on the supply line rather than people out on the front lines, I wonder how it might sound different. Would it have been, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, uh, your kingdom come, uh, you know, and your will be done if it is your will and in the way that you want to move. And, but hey, I don't want to overstep my bounds. And, and you know, if it be your will to give prayer, I mean, it, there would be all these little, these little subtle diff deference sort of uh, false humility things all crammed in there. But notice how there is none of that in the Lord's Prayer. It is bold. It is direct. It is declarative, it is bold, it is assumptive, it is expectant, and the Lord just wants us to stand up and square our shoulders and say, your kingdom come, your will be done. Take care of me and my situations in the, in the meantime. And when the enemy arrives, strengthen me to stand up and defeat. I mean, that's the tone that Jesus spent a lot of time helping to create. Praying the Lord's Prayer by itself without the right tone is missing uh, a number of things. If we're going to invite kingdom, the kingdom of God onto earth, we need to stand up and invite the kingdom of God onto earth. Matthew 16, uh, we see Jesus uh, go a little bit further in the empowerment for prayer, um, where he simply says, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you allow on earth, God will allow from heaven. And whatever you disallow on earth, God will disallow it from heaven. Do, do you see the, the, the place that we are in? Jesus gave us the keys to the doors of heaven. What needs to be flowing out of heaven and affecting our place upon the earth, it's up to us to open that door. We've got the key. Look in your spiritual pocket. You're probably going to find a key there that you haven't really uh, used it with the authority that it was intended. We almost pray as though we're hoping for a good outcome rather than pulling out a key that we expect that this key has been given to me by Jesus to stick in that lock in that door in heaven. And when I do, I open it. And when I open that door, stuff comes pouring out of heaven and starts to change what's going on in our church, in our families, in our lives. Do you see the expectancy uh, of the knowledge that Jesus has given us a key? Boy, 
It's time for us to learn to whip out our keys and expect them to work the same way when we're walking up to the front of our house. We pull out the keys and stick it in our front door and we expect it to work and we're gonna walk into our own house. It's that kind of consistency and familiarity Jesus wanted us to have. That's why he wanted us uh, to have such a key. And when we operate in the power of Jesus' name, this is the kind of stuff that is actually going on. A friend of ours uh, told a story of a little guy who was uh, uh, taking a bath. His mom had ran his bath water. And as he started to get in, he goes, oh, mom, it's too hot. Turn it down. And she stuck her finger in there and said, oh, it's not that bad. Get on in. And so he got in a little bit more. Mom, it's too hot. You know, turn, turn that water down. And once again, she scolded him and, and sent him back in. And, uh, but he was raised in a preacher's home, a home that knew how to pray in an authoritative kind of way. So he wheeled around and he said, Mom, in the name of Jesus, turn that water down. <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> I think she probably realized, oh, man, if he's ready to go pray in that way, it must really be hotter than I think. Uh, and it's just kind of a funny story that really triggers in me the, the power of what it means to be having a key like this in our pocket. We have the ability to absolutely open doors in heaven and the keys for that are already in our pocket. We live with one foot in the already and the other foot in the not yet. That's actually one of the inelegant phrases of the kingdom of God that comes out of the theological world because Jesus has won already an awful lot at the cross. But there's a lot that he hasn't, he hasn't won, not yet. It's up to us to turn the not yet into the already. It's up to us to take our keys and stick it in heaven's doors and cause heaven to pour out into our particular places upon the earth that we have leadership over and, and, and the realms that we have to affect and turn all of that stuff into, uh, into the already. One foot in the already gives us confidence in the power that we have. Another foot in the not yet is what causes us to be very effective in evangelism. And it's there that we are inviting the kingdom of God into those places. And we've just got to remember, God doesn't move as much uh, when he wants to nearly as much as when we want him to, because we've been given the keys by Jesus himself. Are you willing to take the key out of your pocket, stick it into a divine door and expect heaven to come roaring forth into your situation? That's what Frontline's prayer is all about. And that is exactly how we invite the kingdom of God onto earth. That's our job.